Um, so he didn't go into that intervention group in year three, but it looks like he could be ready for it now, doesn't it? Yeah, I was going to say he's got very good understanding mentally mm. and he can explain it very well verbally, but it's the recording of it yeah. which is quite difficult. So that might good. be a good one. For years, schools have used pupil data software systems, but rarely have they been utilised by teachers or within classrooms. At Park Lane Primary School in Peterborough, office staff have joined forces with teachers in collating a variety of pupil data into one system in an attempt to get a more in-depth picture of every child. Non-teaching staff focus on pupils' lives outside of the classroom, inputting data such as their daily attendance and sporting achievements. Teachers, meanwhile, concentrate on the academic records of pupils, adding their SATS results to data gathered in the classroom. Targets are essential to data collection within the classroom. Do we think Julian could achieve his target by writing that? Yes, I think he has. Because on the target here it says, use words such as although. So he could get a stamp for that, couldn't he? The targets are set termly and they're based on our findings from um, the SATS data that we have from pilot SATS and the Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 SATS as well. It's really important for the pupils to have their targets because we like for them to know where they've got to get to, where they've got to get to eventually and also, more importantly, how to get there. And it's the how to get there that's really important so they can let us know which bits they maybe find more difficult and which bits we can help them on. Right, so what target do you think you've achieved there, um, then? To manipulate clauses. To manipulate clauses, because what information have you left to the end of this sentence? That, that mountains was around him. Um... That's right, well done. So we can stamp that to say that you're on target. As well as your success criteria, you need to do your targets as well. Targets. If you've just got a mark, you don't know what you've done wrong, so you can't improve it. If you don't know, it's really hard to improve it because they like they won't tell you where you need to improve it, but with the mm -hmm. targets, it's really useful and helpful. The data that we use in order to track where the pupils are and where they're going to is really extremely useful. It's useful because at any time, any teacher can look back and see the progress that a child has made. Once the data has been gathered through target setting, this is added to each child's profile held on the system. But the school hasn't always been so advanced in its approach. I came here a year and a half ago. They did have uh, elementary pupil uh, tracking systems, but really it wasn't a cohesive approach to it. They would have data held in different places and they weren't utilising the full functionality of what they had already paid for in terms of their MIS system. So collating that data, trying to put it in one place and then determining what was useful data and what wasn't useful data was a key area. My key focus since I've been here was to get that in a, an orderly way that people could understand and we could make use of. Year groups. To help teachers understand the online system, the specific training days are held. If you slide that mark sheet across, you'll find the columns ready for you to populate. Today is um, a training day and we assign a training date for us to analyse data and to identify what that data is telling us. So if I want to track how well that Springboard 3 group have done, I can assign that to all the maths mark sheets we've got. Then we can measure just the impact of that group and see whether the strategy has had a positive impact. It's really important to let the teachers have hands-on use for the software. This system was originally an office-based system. But as pu more information about pupils is now put on the system in terms of assessment data, achievements and those sorts of things, they be that belongs in the hands of the teachers. All of that data is going to inform your decision about the targets that are being set for those children. So what we need to do is look at these, disagree or agree using the data and then try and make our own. OK. The problem is... If we want last year's SATS results, I don't know where they are now. There's so much on here now. Teachers can't make these judgments, even if it's end of key stage or end of year judgments, without the knowledge, the day-to-day -day knowledge 
of their children, their pupils in their classes. And to do that, they're involving all the AFL strategies that they normally use. The layered curriculum targets, the working walls, the scaffolded marking. All of those elements are there, but they've come to this session with all that knowledge and they're applying that knowledge to something as large as whole school target setting. Armed with an understanding, teachers are able to use the pupil data system to track pupils' progress and identify pupils in need of further support. Thanks for meeting. So as the assessment coordinator, I just wanted to have a look at the year four intervention group. So we'll be starting in the spring term, but it'd be good to look at them now. Mm -hmm. And then perhaps we could have a look again at the end of the autumn term just to check we've got the right kids. Yeah. Um, so I know we're not always looking for the pupils that have got the lowest score in the SATs test at the end of year three. I think the benefit of having it all held centrally is that you don't lose it because you, you could lose pieces of paper that's right. and that, that's not lost. Everyone has, can see it and you can do things with it that, that make it easy to interpret and for people to understand. So she did really well to get a 2 Yes, yeah, she two did. A. I was quite surprised to see it. Because in, she it, can because do it in a test situation, but in the classroom it's concentration. She is only just a 2A. But she, um, teacher assessment, I think she would probably have been a 2B. So again, I think she might be a good one. I think it's the openness of it as well when it's there, because, you know, in my classroom, there wouldn't just be me teaching in here, like um, Sue comes down and teaches my class for music, and I've got, obviously, a teacher who comes to release me for planning and preparation and assessment time. So it means that it's all open, so if anybody wanted to access it, then, it, then it's open to everybody to see. Quite interesting though, isn't it, how the ones that were in intervention groups have made really good progress. Yeah, definitely. And um, the one that stands out, I think, from year three is Grace. And although, she, again, she's in a lower ability group, she's at the very top of yes. that. And you can see in her mental and her written work, she's there straight away all yeah. the time, so that's really nice to see. So what's the reality for teachers using a software system? It seemed like, you know, hold on a minute here, there's too much to take on but when you actually see you know like all the parents evening data that we were inputting which is what we would have anyway and it's all the assessments that the children have done when they come to us first so we can work out where they are and then that's helping yeah. parents to understand where they are it really was beneficial to see that. The system has helped streamline the report writing process. A lot of this data has been um, inputted by my teaching assistants they've also inputted the children's layered targets and the children themselves have actually come to type their own target in so it's t saved a lot of time. I would have probably spent several hours writing out um, reading ages and spelling ages and things like that to share with parents but this has all just been generated with data that's held centrally anyway so and it looks quite nice. It has their names and dresses on and it's just a professional document that I think parents are very pleased to receive and um, I think they find it quite informative. We went to parents' evening last night yeah. um, and we got three sheets of A4 paper. <laughs> Lots of information about their numeracy and their literacy and their spellings, yeah. um, what they excel at, um, what the um, average is. And, and their targets. And their targets, yeah, and then what they've, what they've achieved. So we know what to help them with. At the end, there's targets and it tells you his strengths and his weaknesses and I know now at home with his reading what I have to focus on more and what he what comes really easily to him so yeah. that information helps me yes, push yeah. in the right direction there's no good me pushing in a direction that he already knows so it's really really useful mm. as well as monitoring pupils academic progress the system is able to track pupils attendance records now Amy? Is Amy here today? No. The new functionality allows me to look at a glance and see what our attendance is to this point in time. And I find that particularly useful. And the pie graph on there is the whole school attendance. I do ask to see parents if they request term time holidays. And this particular parent had a caravan. And he was in the habit of taking the children out of school on a Friday, a Friday afternoon perhaps, and then not returning them till Monday lunchtime. And when I highlighted that on the, his child's attendance patterns, he was actually horrified. And he said to me afterwards, I didn't realise how often I was taking the children out of school until you showed me that visually. And he stopped doing it. And I think that's a bit of a result. The pupil data system is used during regular meetings with the Education Welfare Officer. So it's your first time here at Park Lane. Yes. We'll have a look at the pupils' 
in turn. I've got a list of pupils that have got under 95% attendance. Then if we go through those one at a time, then you can make your decisions about what you're advising me yeah. to do. Okay. The Education and Welfare Officer comes to school once, yeah. perhaps every half term, and she will ask to see a list of pupils whose attendance is under 95%. And we literally go down each pupil on that list and see if there's reasons. There's a pattern evolving there, isn't there? Mondays. <laughs> Mondays. So, you know, we have an issue with Mondays here that's sure. made very, very clear with this software. I mean, not so much of a pattern, but quite no. a large number of absences there. So, again, so that's 12 half days. That's a significant impact. So her attendance is only 67.6, yes. which is very worrying, this isn't is it? It is very low. Your office will chase that up. Well, yeah, yep. we'll chase that up initially, and then um, but it's certainly one to monitor. Definitely monitor, and again, possible letter one. Governors can also access specific attendance data from the system. As governors, we would be given a, um, an overview of attendance for each class. So at a glance, you can immediately see if something jumps out at you and there's a problem in a particular class. Our school, we're running at about 94.9% absences as opposed to a 95% average for the county, county isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Well, the data is vital, isn't it, so that we can oh, actually yeah, and see. it gives it a concrete yeah. per comparison yeah. rather than say, oh, well, we're just a bit below and, well, well how a bit below? You know, you, you've got yeah. to actually see the figures for something like that. It is, and year on year we can see um, if there are any patterns developing or, or um, that we are actually meeting our targets or we're just short of the targets and then we can actually establish why that is. It's just the evidence that we need Please. as governors to be able to see, and it's a snapshot view for us, which is the important thing. Staff oh. recognise extra achievement both in and out of school and record them on each pupil's profile. So I wonder, could all of you, if you've got good work, can you stand up and come out now, please? Now we've got one, Grace from reception, yes? I think it's important to have a system that you can adapt to suit the needs of your school. When we record pupils' achievements, you can determine what sort of achievements you want to register. So we have set up things like takes good work into assembly, is a school council member, a sporting achievement, and a variety of other things that meet what we're doing in our schools. Your same piece of work with a capital letter, so that's absolutely fantastic. Shall we give Grace a clap? Thank you very much. Can you go and sit down? Thank you. I'm a um, teaching assistant. I work in the classrooms with the teachers and we're following on from the achievement assembly and we're putting the achievements onto each individual child to say what they've done within their class and their work. It is a very positive thing for the children. They love going up in assembly and receiving their certificates and obviously when it goes onto the system it's printed out at the end and their parents get to see this and it's just you can see the whole picture of what they have achieved while they've been at school. It's worth doing because of the reaction of the children. They're just so positive about it and it reflects in the behaviour. They all want to do well, they all like to have these certificates. Thank you very much.